All right, so the first step here to make sure the next five years of your life are different is really a very, very simple process of looking back at the last five and trying to figure out what went right and what went wrong. Because obviously, if you did everything right, then you probably would not be watching this. And if you did everything wrong, honestly, you're probably not watching this either. But if you're somewhere in between and you know you want to get better, then reflect back on these key quadrants of your life. This is an exercise I've included called the whole life pie, and it really is reflecting on your happiness and your fun, your career, money, and financial, your free time and leisure, your health and fitness, your friends and relationships, your personal growth, in other words, did you get better, and then you're making a difference and contribution. So basically, you can check out that exercise included there, and then when you plot it and draw it out, you can see where there are the imbalances or where there are the 10 out of 10s. And that by itself should be the good barometer. Now, if you're not really sure, it's really, really simple. Just look at your life today, right? Is your friend group a 10? Every night, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you always have fun thing planned. You feel like you belong somewhere. You're so satisfied. Do that with love, with your fitness, with your weight. Just look in the mirror. Is that what you want? And then with your financial life, travels, adventures, your career, go through it. And is it what you wanted? So the second step is that if that's not what you wanted, plan out the next five with a very simple exercise. It starts with one question, which is if a magic fairy came along and waved his or her wand, a genie, all right, you got your wishes for everything to come true this year. What would it take to be the best year of your life? And that's a really sweet focusing question because what happens is that you're going to realize that, hey, you know what? If I had the best year ever, this is what it would be. I would be living in this different city. I'd have the best friends of my life, like Turk and JD and Scrubs. I would have just the most fulfilling work and I would work maybe between 40 and 50 hours a week. After that, I would go to the gym or go to yoga, go to an awesome event with friends I'd be in a relationship with my dream significant other, dream guy, dream girl, and this is what we would do on the weekends. We would take these four international trips per year, and you just keep going. And what you learn is that by asking the simple question, what would the best thing imaginable be? Not what's realistic, what would be the most awesome thing? What would that be? That's what you write down that you want to build in the next five years. Now the final thing that I do in my annual and quarterly review in my business and in my mastermind is that I ask three other questions that I don't see a lot of people ask. And these are fast track upgrades. The first one, the question is, what are the things you're most afraid of? Okay? I actually keep a list of the things I'm most afraid of in Evernote and I force myself every quarter to do one of those things that I'm afraid of. The thing could be something you're truly afraid of. Maybe your fear is similar to mine. Maybe your fear is of lonely or being alone or being isolated too much. So you guessed it. The cure to that fear is you isolate yourself intensely for a week. You don't use your phone to reach out to anyone. You don't go out on a Friday or Saturday or Sunday when you're aching for connection. You just do it for a week and then record what happened and how you felt. And you realize it wasn't that bad, all right? Maybe the fear is of building a business. Maybe the fear is of writing a book and getting criticized. Maybe it's asking that guy or that girl out. You have to execute on one of those fears every quarter. The second question is, what is one bucket list item you want to do in the next 100 days just for fulfillment? So if you died and you never got a chance to do what things, what would you be disappointed about? Okay? So for me, I wrote down, you know, it would be really, really fun to go hike the Camino de Santiago in Spain. So I'm probably going to be doing that this coming September. Or maybe you write down, you know, I've always wanted to go to southern France and just wake up every day and just have the best time of my life wandering these little old towns, these little small villages. And then I want you to pick one of those experiences you want. It could be cheap. It could be small. It could be bringing friends together and then do that. And the third thing is really a reiteration of part two, which is what goals would make this year the best year ever? And I'm going to go into it again because it's so tempting when you set your goals to set the realistic goal, right? I'm going to lose 10 pounds. I'm going to start dating again. I'm going to reinvigorate my relationship. I'm going to take that trip to Cape Cod. Like, it's so tempting to do that, but it's so unsexy. 
right? It's so boring thinking about incremental growth rather than what would be the literally coolest, most epic thing you could do this year. That makes you feel inspired. That makes you feel good. So I want you to take the time to write out what would be the coolest year imaginable and then get started building that year. So I hope that helps you guys to help plan out the next five years of your life. Hopefully you're not waiting five years to realize you might have been on the wrong path or things were not going well.